Uh, warm welcome to all of you, to those of you that are present here in our council, our Birth Keepers Council today, and to all of you who are joining us on Facebook Live in this present moment, and all who will join in the future. It's uh, it's with so much joy and gratitude to be able to be here together and to contribute to the seven days of rest and sacred renewal that I just want to honor Shelley Ostroff and Jan Golding and their inspiration and devotion to be both the initiators and stewards of this global yearly event. We're really invited to come together and rest into the new year, to pause and to integrate and reflect and to gather together and create a really strong cauldron together for these transformational times in which we live. And I wanna share just a little bit about how this council came together. Sarah Grace, a dear sister, was with us for her 40th birthday a few weeks ago. And <clears throat> we were uh, guided to get on a call with Shelley and Jan, Makasha and I. And during that call, we realized that we, um, we really felt inspired to bring together Council of Beloveds who were devoted to conscious birthing and to be able to offer the wisdom that sits in this circle and to inspire greater understanding and awareness around conscious birthing. So we join with all of you and I invite my beloved sister, Sarah, to introduce herself and to begin introducing the rest of the council. Mm, welcome everybody. Welcome again to our beautiful council. I am Sarah Grace and I'm here in such honor to bring together this incredible group of birth servers for many, many, many years and collectively our medicine in the world is much needed in this time. Very touched to be here with you. I am the founder of Somatic Sanctuary here in Ojai, and I've now been involved in somatic therapies for over 20 years. Uh, one in which I'm very, very committed to, which is the pre and perinatal field. So ultimately healing what happened from preconception to the age of three, those formative years where our brain is formed. I've along the way met some incredible, incredible pioneers of this work. One in which we call forth an ancestor in our field. I have a candle lit here with his photo named Ray Castellino. Fionn, you can bring up his image. So we just take a moment to honor his deep presence with us as well. So many of us have studied with Ray and um, myself and many here are trained in the pioneering work where he created womb surround process workshops. So helping adults support and heal their early trauma in a field of health coherence and love, attunement. So that's what we'll be speaking about today is how do we bring uh, the humanity into this new era, into this new cycle needed now more than ever in a field of love, health, coherence, and support. Do you want to add something there, Kat? Oh, I thought you. So I just wanted to offer my, my deep gratitude to being here and this incredible council of wisdom keepers. I will name our intention of this council and I, in, before I introduce this group, it is this family of earth walkers that have de devoted their entire lives in shaping the health and coherence of the new humanity and families for the past many, many years. So the intention of this circle is to come together as a collective voice 
addressing the importance and of conscious birthing. We deeply recognize the vital influence of the preconception phase, gestation, birth, and early bonding in shaping the health and well being of every individual. And of course, how this contributes to the health and harmony of our culture. So it's with great honor that I get to introduce some of the ones that I've brought into this council. Mary Jackson, if we can spotlight this beloved, is a profound midwife for the past 45 plus years. She has supported thousands of children being birthed in this time in a place of such love, profound presence, care, and attunement. She's worked very deeply with Ray Castellino in the teaching and co-forming of how they hold womb surrounds. She's a vital, vital teacher, mentor, skilled midwife for our times. I have witnessed in assisting birth with her, how a child being born feels the essence of Mary in the room and instantly everything releases and open when she comes in. I've seen this and I know this deep in my heart. She carries a pearl of wisdom that is her essence. Mary, I'd like to just welcome you to this circle. We thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Sarah. What a beautiful introduction. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Our beloved Judith Weaver has been a mentor of mine for the past 20 years. It's such an honor to be with you here, Judith. Judith has her PhD in Reiki and psychology. She is the founding chair of the Santa Barbara Graduate Institute, the PhD program in somatic psychotherapy. She also taught at the California Institute of Integral Studies in Naropa for many, many years. She is a profound expression of how to hold space in the somatic field. She is the, a senior teacher of the Rosen Method and Sensory Awareness. I have been graced by her presence in my life and have been deeply influenced by how you, Judith, hold space for so many. I welcome you here to this circle, Judith. Thank you so much, Sarah, for welcoming me now, for inviting me. It's an honor to be here with all of you today. Thank you. Beloved Tara Blasco, we welcome you to the circle. Thank you so much for being here. Tara has her PhD in pre and perinatal psychology from the Santa Barbara Graduate Studies Institute as well. She has worked and co-directed the BEVA Clinic with Dr. Ray Castellino, our dear mentor, dear guide. The BEVA Clinic is a clinic based on building and enhancing bonding and attachment. I've been assisting Tara in supporting families healing and ultimately how to create families that are based on function, <laughs> love, health, coherence, and care. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Tara. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me and thank you everybody. It's really a pleasure and I feel honored to be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Our beloved sister, Jen Dudley. Look at that, Kiara. Hi, little one. <laughs> Welcome to our circle, Kiara. <laughs> Sweetheart, look at that little girl. <laughs> oh. So our beloved sister Jen, Jen was a childbirth educator and doula for over 15 years. She is a dear, dear birth doula to 
my company, Somatic Sanctuary, and the work that we're doing. She's also supported Ray Castellino in his work and his work in the world. She is now a heart-based business consultant who helps primarily women birth their conscious-based businesses in the world. And I can assure you her being a doula has been essential. She is a dear, dear friend, and I'm so honored to have you here, Jen. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you, Sarah. I'm honored to be here. And I also wanted to say thank you for having this important conversation. This is a, a really critical conversation for us to be having. Thank you. And in our beloved Cesare Scala. So Cesare is another dear friend and colleague in the Ojai community. Cesare comes in with the perspective of midwifing death and what it means to support one who is transitioning. And I know deeply in my heart what it takes to show up in the dying process. In all my years of being a birth doula myself and supporting conscious birth, I was able to really be with my father's death in a way that prepared me on some level as when we pass from this form to the next, we are reborn into an emanation of light that is so profound. And Cesare is here as a wisdom keeper of how to be with in the presence of transition. And as we know, families, conception, gestation, birth, and bonding are all multitudes of transition. So we welcome you, Cesare. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for this invitation and to be present in this beautiful council. It's a true honor to, to sit with you all. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll, I'll pass the rest of the introductions to our beloved cat. And I just want to name one piece as we see our beloved Kiara and Mel and Jer. This is the first time I've got to see in the flesh our sweet Kiara out of the womb. I supported this family on Skype while I was in Hawaii and they were in Australia birthing this beautiful, precious one. So we say hi, Kiara. Thank you for being on this call with us and showing us what it means to come in in a way with consciousness. So happy to have you. <laughs> Came oh, with you. Absolutely, yeah. Grateful Jeremy, to be here. Oh. <laughs> Jeremy is um, our first child that was born at home 42 years ago. And uh, his, he really initiated, um, well, as Makasha had already had a home birth with a prior child. And then we brought Jeremy in at home. And um, he and Melanie together are so devoted to conscious birthing and raising of consciousness and all their work in the world. And they're our beautiful granddaughter, Kiara, there. <laughs> He's so present with us now. Um, milk so, drunk. <laughs> milk drunk. <laughs> mm. uh, just a deep bow of honor for mm. the ways that you are both brought PR mm. into the world and are raising her uh, a real gift to our our collective devotion to create a real soul centric <clears throat> culture. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, Jeremy is a musician and actor and storyteller and. Melanie is uh, amazing, devoted to the, both of them, to the raising of consciousness through breath work and many other means. So thank you both for all three of you for showing up with us today. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, really grateful to be here and already feeling so, so touched, you know, this, the, the heart opening that's, uh, that's present. I mean, there's no specific words to it, but I just feel super cracked up and from this gathering and uh, honored to be here. So. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Mm. Now I'd like to introduce dear sister Sarah Naya Soleil, who uh, <clears throat> we had the, the blessing of she and her, her family with Leaf and their two beautiful children 
coming into our lives about 10 years ago. And um, <clears throat> Sarah is an amazing trainer of Abdullah's and Earth Whisperer. I'd like to actually just read her short little bio here. It's so fabulous. So, <laughs> her sequence of being conceived was the initial spark that ignited her passion for the in <clears throat> invisible doorways and nonverbal realms that surround us. A mother of two, Sarah received the gift of experiencing a life-changing transcendent state of consciousness at the age of 20 during the four-hour birth of her son. This, initi this initiation led her to study ancient ways, intuitive arts, creation, and midwifery. To date, Sarah has attended 300 plus births and has offered 1,000, more than 1,000 spirit baby readings to people from around the world. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and, and Sarah's also been offering her doula trainings here at Hummingbird and, and really carrying, um, carrying on our heartfelt initiative called Humming Birth that's devoted to conscious birthing. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much. And my fondest memory of being with you all in that Hummingbird is just the moments of joyous tears and deep hugs and just so grateful for all of you here and so grateful for you Mama Kat and Makasha, Papa Makasha for all that you have stewarded and I really truly feel just in awe of all the beauty you've created and humbled to be here so thank you. Uh, and I'd now like to introduce um, Patrick and Layla who are joining us from Maui, Hawaii, where they've landed with their three children. And just a little bit ago, they showed us pictures of the whales breaching out from their window. Um, I also heard Judith uh, was seeing two eagles. I just want to presence the uh, <clears throat> not other than human species that are joining our circle today. So we met Layla and Patrick soon after their first child was born, really connecting through conscious birthing. And we're blessed to being with them both be right before and right after the birth of their second and third children who were born in the wilds in Maui, uh, in the jungle, um, with just the two of them attending the birth, very courageous beings, mm -hmm. completely devoted to doing things as close to the earth, close to nature as possible. Patrick's an amazing permaculturist dedicated to regeneration of, in all ways. And Layla has written books about her birthing experience and has, is tending uh, numbers of initiatives to support mothers and fathers in conscious birthing. So welcome to the two of you. Thank you guys. So, so honored to be here and such a special group of people that have come together today and really looking forward to the sharing. Thank you again. Yeah, I'm so excited to be learning from all of the peers here, as well as offering wherever we feel like we can. So thank you. Such an honor. And just a moment to introduce my beloved Makasha. We've been together for 45 years. And <clears throat> conscious birthing has been part of our journey since the very beginning of bringing in our four children together. And our, uh, our fourth child was born in the waters in Hawaii, um, a water birth with all three of our children attending, supporting us in the birth. And our, um, our commitment through all these decades is really to whole systems transformation and how do we really create and birth the world that we all dream is possible. Well, thank you, Annie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It, it, it's so beautiful to feel the resonance of, of creation as we are right now in that process together, you know, here in a sacred union and, uh, you know, the whispering of the great spirits muse with us in birthing a new world. I stepped out of the Dominic culture 50 years ago and was told go, uh, you know, go, go birth a new way of being. And I uh, started with conscious birthing in 1972 with my sons, and, and it's been a passion and a 
deep commitment to what we call the Sun-Eyed Children of the Marvelous Dawn, mm -hmm. which is a canto poem out of Sri Aurobindo about these young ones that are coming in and how do we create a culture that empowers and uplifts and inspires the awakening that's happening on the planet to reunite our soul-based realities together in service to the greater matrix of life. Mm -hmm. And I've dedicated my life to, to serve the circle in that way and be a papa and, and show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you for, for mm, mm -hmm. being here with, with us too. It's, it's precious. Uh, so I pass uh, the talking piece back to dear sister Sarah. Mm, thank you, everybody. So beautiful to have you here. So Catherine and I are going to lead us into just a gentle attunement of arriving into our seat and our hearts. When we do that, I'll then pass the talking stick back and we'll continue to just share our, a pearl of wisdom, ultimately. Each one of us will share what we pray and what we hope to see from our years of experience and the depth of importance of supporting birth and families, parents, at this time on the planet. So let's just take a moment, if we wanna just close our eyes or have them just gently downward, taking a moment to return from the head space, resting down into the heart space. Just starting to feel how your seat is making contact with the earth. Always the breath. Sensing the breath as the breath is breathing you just now. My cat likes when we co-regulate together, so she's joined. <laughs> I'm just sensing how we each collectively sit on our sacred earth mother, the true mother, and what it means to take life on earth at this time as we track mother earth below, father sky above, just sensing through that central channel of you, that mid space. The core, how the breath lives in the belly, in the heart, in the center of the head. Just spacious attention receiving the profound sacred vessel of your body on earth in communion and connection to the spirit and blueprint of life and the mystery that brings us here. I invite you to open the experience of gratitude for taking incarnation, being embodied at this most auspicious time in our evolutionary journey. And every being comes with gifts to give to assist in this great transition. Let us drop deeply into gratitude for our own special embodiment that we bring to earth at this time. 
for making this courageous journey. And let us imagine that we are all sitting in the forest together, surrounded by the tall, mighty pines. And in the center of our circle is a, a blazing fire of warmth and inspiration. And we gather in this council together to address the critical importance of birthing, of bringing our children in in a loving, caring, and conscious way that they're imprinted with only the highest and the best. As we all co-create together a world that's based on soul, that brings forth our soul qualities in harmonious and loving ways. Let us all listen deeply within ourselves and to each other mm. <clears throat> so that we may be inspired by the wisdom shared in this council today and inspired and take action forward with what lives in each of our own hearts. So be it. So to first begin our collective share, what comes to me as I sit here with each of you in this time is self-responsibility. In the 20 years that I've been healing my own early wounding and then ultimately getting trained in these profound healing modalities to help others, self-responsibility is key. Processing our early wounds from the preconception, time, birth, early bonding, is the way that we prevent passing on traumas to the next generation. Calling in the right layers of support are key. Having ones who can support us to do this work. In the heart of my coming to Ojai, which was given to me from Maladoma Some, a West African elder. It was very clear that I was to come and open up a center for healing here, in which I worked very closely with Ray Castellino. And he gifted me the opportunity to feel my right of conception with a father figure. And I just want to name the power of touching the self and calling forth the pieces that we need to be in our fullness in humanity. Because when we transform, the whole world transforms, but it starts with us. And when that inner transformation happens, then that transformation can touch the hearts of the ones that you touch. So self-responsibility is what I choose to offer into this space with you. And my prayer is that each of you receive the layers of support that fit perfectly to the health and matrix that you need to feel cared for and loved. And we hope that those joining us today are touched by the hearts of this gathering. Know that we are here for you in love, in deep care. 
So I, it is my honor to pass the share to our beloved Mary Jackson. And I welcome you, Mary. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. I feel so honored to be here with all of you. And um, I love that you showed Ray's picture right in the beginning. Um, I have a lot of appreciation to Ray for the work I'm doing now, which is to support families to, to heal and integrate what their birth experiences have been as well as supporting them to birth. And um, when I started working with Ray, he really uh, broadened my vision of what it was babies know and how conscious they are and how much wisdom they come in with. And as a midwife of 47 years, I thought back then it was like 20 years that I had worked, 25 years before I met him. And I thought I had a really good idea of what babies were all about and how they um, were sensitive and what they took in. And after working with him, it was like such a world's difference in how I perceived them. And um, he used to talk a lot about the conception journey um, in the trainings we do, the first module is all about the conception, preconception, conception journey of a soul coming in and would refer to how, where we come from, wherever we hang out, you know, as soul become, before coming into the physical form, we're in a state that's, you know, pure blueprint health and wholeness. And as we come in, to the physical form from two people uniting with their bodies and donating one cell from each person, there's that potential for a human being to be formed. And like Makasha was saying earlier, as we were preparing for the talk that he was standing looking at the sea of grandchildren and great grandchildren that added up to be like 50 people and how you know, in the beginning of just two of them coming together, the seeds just kept multiplying forward. And um, I think it's just beautiful. And when we prepare for conscious conception, the love and the awareness and attention that we bring to that, it gets multiplied as the cells divide. It's like in that early phase of the forming child, each cell is, is held and experiences the imprint of what that connection was before they came. So uh, my awe is really about how potent the preconception and conception journey is coming into physical form as well as going out of the physical form, which is another form of birthing, which you mentioned earlier, Sarah, birthing out of our body and returning to that place that we lived in before we came in. So I have so much respect to that process. And um, just um, having all also about how the baby is grown, gestated and formed in the vessel of a woman's body and then burst through that little canal into this broad world that we are all living in. And when we're making decisions about what is best for the birth, what is best for the baby, what is best for the family, to ask ourselves the questions, you know, what supports the wholeness of that being, the wholeness, the wisdom, the timeless wisdom of where they come from and what they hold within them? How can we support that? And what choices would cause harm to ourselves, to our babies, and to really look to support the intact capacity for them to love and to exist as purely as what was there before. And as we go through life, it piles on, you know, the experiences of what imprints us and how, how our um, choices are formed by what we live for, what we live through. And that we 
always can have connection to the blueprint and the wholeness. It doesn't ever go away. It is always, always there. Our attention can move away from it and we can lose connection to it, but it is always there and always reachable. So I think just to remind people of that, that no matter what happens, that it's never too late to heal, never too late to integrate our early, early experiences and whatever happens there influences how we live, how we make our choices. And um, I think also just to name the importance of the love that the most important thing is how we love. And that can be so supportive of integrating and healing all that came before. So I think also just to support your statement about the layers of support, Sarah, that I think connection at birth by loved, loved ones and people who can really support the natural process is super important. So to have layers, layers of support for each person present at that sacred moment of birth. So much to say, it's hard to put it in a nutshell of five minutes, but I think that's good for now. <laughs> and I just, I just love being here and sharing with all of you and eager to hear what wisdoms you bring. Thank you. Oh, and then I'm gonna pass it on with great honor to Jeremy and Monica and Melanie. Melanie, Melanie sorry. And it's okay. Yeah, just meeting you. So I'm sorry I got your names wrong. And I'm forgetting your name, little one. What is your name? Kiara. 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 You're so beautiful and I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Beautiful. Yeah, thank yeah. You. Yeah, I'll start. Um, yeah, just feeling into this beautiful process that we've been in over the last few years, and the wisdom I'd love to just share is similar to um, yeah, that's my yeah. you should hold. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, it was around preconception as well, actually. Like we were on a really beautiful journey um it took us about two years to conceive <laughs> but i'm really wanted to honor the timing of kiara and trusting in her timing and i think at first it could have been a bit stressful of like oh why am i getting pregnant but when i could move through that and actually utilize that time to really prepare and prepare the body prepare the home um, we did a lot of ceremony and just really preparing the field and also um, with our community, you know, really having our community help call her in. And it was just actually this beautiful process of two years of preparation and just how important that was and the support around that, um, I feel was really important. So I think the main part of that was just the trust, trusting the timing that this soul, this child knows exactly when they wanna come and it's the perfect time and it might not be what we planned but that it was just amazing and to have that time so just feeling into that and of course the whole journey has just been so special and really honoring Kiara's time and how she wants to be in the world and in everything so just yeah that would be my piece of trusting, mm. trusting her timing and really just acknowledging her time in the rhythm yeah <laughs> um beautiful thank you melanie yeah i think i would add i'm i'm feeling um just such a deep sense of gratitude for the um for this work i mean just for the the field the field phenomena of of what's present and just the um all the pioneering that's happened um you know i think about my parents and then all of all of you on the, on the council and and those around the world who have been stewarding this and 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 such a, a big shift and um and transformation about how 
um, you know, con conscious conception, conscious birth, all, all of it has, has grown and developed. And in a way, just really feeling like a product of that or, you know, kind of in the field of that and how powerful um, that is. And yeah, just feeling a deep sense of gratitude that um, for what I, what I was born into and the, um, the mindfulness and the, and the consciousness that, 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 that conscious conception is even a thing, <laughs> you know, like, oh, wow, that's, let's do that, you know? Um, and it's just the, the layering of, of that and how um, that it's been spoken in terms of the, the inner work, um, having the awareness of um, the inner work. It's like, I think for both of us was such a drive and a motivation to recognize like taking responsibility as Sarah spoke to, but that we're not gonna, I mean, inevitably we're gonna be passing things on to Kiara and, and her as she grows and has kids and so on and so forth. But as much, inner work and as much transformation and as much kind of, you know, kind of clearing and cleaning that can happen um, to give her the the best, the, you know, the most fertile ground for her being to, to, to take root in and, and to grow in. And, um, and then of course the journey, you know, just continues every day. And as you can see, we're, we're, we're in it. <laughs> and, um, and it's just, uh, it's such a beautiful um, experience. Um, as Melanie mentioned, just the, the journey leading up to conception and the consciousness that we brought to that. Um, and then the, you know, the journey that we're on and again, just the gratitude for all of you and for the field. And so I think the, um, you know, the piece of that I want to bring is just really tuning into the field and tuning into the support, whether it's physical or non-physical um, for all of us that are in this birthing process to be able to tap into that and know that it's strong and it's, it's alive and it's pulsating and it's there and it's available for all of us at all time, you know, and it's ancient and it's new and it's evolving and it's, uh, and it's real. And so just sharing that and uh, that re remembrance and also just that, um, that, that it's, that it's there to support us and how, how amazing that that is. So yeah, deep gratitude to you all. And yeah. You want to say anything, Kira? Hello. Hi. <laughs> right, passing the stick on. Beautiful. And and we're uh, just so honored and blessed to introduce our dear sister, Sarah, who uh, is beaming from where you are. It's so such a blessing to be here and share space together. Um, so yeah, please take it away to the next layer. So good to see you and be here. Oh. oh my goodness. So I would like to offer into this shared field and counsel the, the joy of possibility moving forward. All that is possible when we embrace the archetype of the birth keeper, the gatekeeper. My experience is that in, in that we are all here, we have all been born. And so sometimes I think, you know, it's easy to move through the world and, and dismiss birth and its significance, but we have all been born. And the archetype, the, the role of the birth keeper, the gatekeeper, be it midwife, doula, sister, auntie, you know, friend, um, this archetype is one of witnessing consciousness, someone who is observing with great love and care uh, as liminal spaces appear, as the threshold is there, as, as pain, um, perhaps pain surfaces. And so the joy of possibility of when this pain comes, be it in a birthing process of any kind, um, physical or other, um, the joy of possibility of what it is when we observe this pain, when we surrender into this pain, even when we find ways of not only being present with the pain, but um, uh, curious, wonder-filled, awe-filled, uh, moved by it, moved with a passion um, to come to understand that there is so much more than pain and fear in birth. 
be it physical or other or other, and yet the memory, the pervading narrative for so many of us is one of pain and separation. And that's a longer conversation. And I just, I have so much joy and so much hope and so much um, that tells me in my own body that when we bring presence, when we engage um, in that archetype of the gatekeeper, the birth keeper, when we uh, approach um, life and birth of all kind um, with curiosity that miracles happen and openings happen and grace comes and it's the embracing of the all that I have just been um, humbled by that again and again and again uh, in my opportunity to witness birth um, from so many walks of life in so many different environments, hospital, birth center, home birth. And yeah, at this point, I, I find that um, I am uh, just holding the, con the continual awe of what is possible. And, uh, and so holding a vision for all of us moving forward, a prayer for all those of you tuning in live or listening to the recording that um, together we anchor into the possibility in hope uh, that, we, that we find ways to be present with what is uncomfortable so that we can resurrect and remember and renew um, our original blueprint as we're all pointing toward, <laughs> there's that, an original blueprint. And, uh, and I find that sometimes pain is the door. Pain can be the door into, into the pleasure when we feel safe. And so envisioning safety for all people and love for all people. And uh, yeah, hope, so much hope and so much joy and so much gratitude for each of you. Thank you. And with great joy, <laughs> I pass the talking piece to Tara, Tara. Thank you, Sarah. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful to hear you. So a little bit of uh, me, I, I came into the world of conscious conception, conscious birth, maybe about 25 years ago when I was living in Spain, my country of origin, and somebody told me, hey, would you like to take a, a process workshop booms around with Ray Castellino to explore your birth? And I said, no way. <laughs> I, I don't want to go know anything about my birth. And, and I was surprised of my own <laughs> response. I was a psychologist. I was a, a kind of psychotherapist. I was a yoga teacher. And I had no idea why I had such a no. And, and of course, you know, it was a door. Um, you know, a few weeks later, I was flying to England and was taking my first wombs around with Ray Castellino, which I love and, and honor. And I am, he was my mentor, my friend. And I'm so glad that many of us, we are honoring him today. So I did this womb surround, it blew my mind. And it was the first time in my life that I felt welcome. Such a basic thing, right? I never felt welcome. I, all my life, I was trying to, I was feeling like something was not okay with me because I wasn't having the felt sense of being welcome. So in the womb surround, I explore um, the discovery when my mom uh, discovered the pregnancy with me that she was not ready to have another baby because my sister was just uh, uh, three months. She was just a newborn, my dear sister. So, you know, I thought I love my mom. I thought I love my sister. And I also learned to love myself more because I was able to see that the reason why I wasn't feeling good about myself, it was because there was nothing wrong about me. I, I was a beautiful being of light and love, like we all are. It was just that I didn't have the felt sense of being welcome at the discovery. And then of course, you know, life took me to this country and I'm living in California now, you know, hi. 
I train and work with Ray and Mary Jackson, and we're doing the trainings, uh, Castellino trainings. I, I love working with families. I direct the clinic, the Beba clinic, and it's just a joy to support families to integrate when there is a birth that it wasn't ideal and to integrate experience, to bring love, to bring connection and to repair if there was any trauma to repair the connection and the relationship. So that's kind of have become, has become my, my passion. It's just kind of what I do. Train others, train myself, teach others. I have two beautiful granddaughters that teach me every day. Uh, as well and um, so maybe my my kind of two cents of wisdom or my pearl here today for everybody is that I hold the intention for a world where every baby is wanted and welcome and that everybody is honored for his or her connection to the source so you know I I know life is not always ideal like my mom couldn't couldn't welcome another little one she was overwhelmed I, I get it and I have worked with so many parents that yes the, the, it's not the timing right the, to have another child and all that has to be a work and process and then there is the decision if that that baby stays there is the decision of how we want to let this baby know that he or she is loved because consciousness is there all the time you know conscious we are conscious beings we come into incarnation we come from consciousness and we return back to consciousness. And the baby knows the source, the baby knows who they are. So also honoring, that's my other kind of little piece of, of, uh, of intentionality today, is just honoring each baby for their connection to the source. Because when we see the little one come in and we see through our eyes where they come from and they feel perceived by us, there is something that lands for them, lands for us, and makes the connection between heaven and earth. So I just hold that uh, intention for all of us. Mm. Sending you all much love. Thank you for having me here. I feel very blessed to be in this uh, council of wise and beautiful people. Thank you. And I'm gonna pass the token stick to my dear friend, Judith Weaver, that was one of the reasons I wanted to be here today, to be super honest with all of you, because I haven't seen you with it for maybe 10, 12 years, or maybe 15, I don't know, for a long time. And I was super happy that you were here. So I pass this to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tara. Am I unmuted? Yes, okay. And thank you all for being here, this is, I'm, I'm very, very moved by everything, everything people have said, by seeing you, by just sitting here. And as I listen, I am, so many things are brought up in me. Uh, but my journey in conscious birthing began in about 1970, not about 1970, I was pregnant and I loved being pregnant. And I read all the books that were available, which weren't many. And I had a coach and everything was wonderful. And I was going to become a midwife eventually. And I had a terribly traumatic birth, my daughter and I. And I was stunned and felt that I couldn't become a midwife because I couldn't experience the birthing. So how could I share that and lead other people through something that I really didn't know? So I studied and became a, a doula and worked with people and as a, um, as a somatic psychotherapist, I've worked with many, many people uh, through their, their processes. And I want to take a pause here and also acknowledge Wilhelm Reich, who probably created the first clinic for mothers and babies in 1942 in New York. And he always, his consciousness was there for the newborn, for the, 
pre you know conception preconception gestation and those those early times after birth his daughter who taught conscious breathing around the world eight times and his granddaughter who is now a midwife in Maine very busy overloaded midwife so that that continuum that family is continuing their connection their work with with conscious breathing and it certainly helped me a lot but i must say that it wasn't until i started working on my own birthing issues not just helping other people but working on my own first with william emerson and then with our dear Ray Castellino and his training and assisting in his training. And that, that was the part that was missing for me all the time. Doing my own work, starting to know what had really happened when I didn't know what had happened. And I must say that when people have asked me over the years, oh, what kind of people do you work with? I always say, oh, I work with big babies and little babies because we are all, our babies are still in us. We're still dealing with whatever we're, we've experienced for the good and the not so good, but there it is, there we are. And um, I love working with people. My favorite is working with, with a person or a couple before before conception and then the the sensing and the awareness through and into into birth and early childhood um i've also for the past 25 30 years worked with the tibetan buddhist nuns in exile i've gone to i was asked to work with them and I've gone to Dharamsala and worked with them what I call alternate ways of healing, various things over many, many years. And one of the last time, the last time I was there teaching them, they said, oh, you've taught us so much and we've known you for so long. And um, now some of us are getting old. Can you please tell us uh, how to be with our our sisters who are getting older and dying. And so the last class I gave to them was on um, how to deal with, uh, with, with the fr fragile people. And I was talking to them and saying things like, you know, it's very important, um, your prosody, your tone of voice, it's very important that you let them know what you're doing. You ask them or tell them, even if you're going to touch the tempo of your voice, your, your connection close or farther apart. And in the middle of a sentence, I stopped because I realized this was exactly the same thing I say to new parents, teaching them or guiding them how to be more aware and consciously connected with their baby, it's the same on the other end of the trip, you might say. And I thought, oh my gosh, coming in, going out, these transitions, it's really the same. We need the same kind of connection, of consciousness, of presence to be with, to be with ourselves and then to be with others and right up here on Cortez Island, where I am now, there is actually a community-led um, death caring collective where we meet and we, we learn how to be with people. And, um, and there even is a, a special place in the cemeteries here where you can have a natural um, burial. However you want, you know. I've always, I always told my children when I die, just dig a hole and throw me in, you know. And my daughter would say, "Mom, that's illegal." Well, in some places, it's not illegal. It's that that how do you want to pass all of these various um, transitions that we have 
those are the two big ones. And there are so many, many, many other ones in between where how can we be and how can we help and how can we, when we are honored to guide people when we're asked. And I am so glad that others of you have, um, have mentioned that too, the, the, the two major transitions that, that we know about. There are probably some more that we don't know about yet, but those big ones in our lives as we, as we sketch them out now. And I would like to pass the walking, the, the talking time to Cesare, who I think will even talk more about that. Thank you very much for listening to me and for being here with all of us together. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judith, for your beautiful words and everyone. Um, for all the wisdom that you hold. I just wanted to pause for a minute here and connect back into that deep resonance in my heart and bowing to gratitude to all the women and men everywhere, the indigenous, of color, enslaved, mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, daughters, sons, servants, and all the village women and men that have been doing our birthing and dying. I keep a very, uh, warm fire always burning within my heart to hold space for this knowledge because that's where we learn from. We learn from others. We learn as a community. We learn in sacred circles to continue to weave these beautiful tapestries of story and of wisdom to hold each other. You know, I am uh, a deaf midwife, so I hold the other end. And it's been really wonderful for me to just sit in the circle and really hear just this beautiful spark of this like consciousness of, you know, what are, what's happening before birth, you know, this preconception, you know, because I see the end stages, right? And I see it just as the same as birth, right? We, we move through um, all, the all the phases, you know, I'm holding labor laboring death as you're holding laboring birth in, in, you know, it can be weeks, it can be months, it can be years. Um, I hold those pieces and it's such a true honor, each and every family and loved ones that are dying. Um, it's a humbling experience. They are my teachers. I learn um, so much of the golden tapestry from the ones I sit with. You know, and I, I keep always going back to this place of, you know, we die the way we lived our lives. Many people don't realize that. So it's so inspiring to hear, you know, let's wake up the consciousness in birth, right? Because we have to hold that consciousness throughout our lives so that we can die with consciousness. And unfortunately in our culture, we've kind of cut off this piece of death. You know, death is just the same in the same celebration as birth. And so I'm very inspired to bring in the, the mystery because um, there's mystery in death as well as in birth and to be in that awe space with the families and to educate them and to lean them into the dying experience, right? Because we're not used to that. We're not used to what active dying could look like. People have seen active labor, but they haven't seen the active dying. It's just been something that's been dropped off in our culture. And we must hold that close to us, right? We must hold in that divine timing of leaving as well as coming. Um, I love educating families. They educate me, as I said, um, in the journey of what, what it is in that consciousness and what are the possibilities, so many possibilities that people don't know, right? Where can we die? How can we die? We can die at home, we can die outside doesn't have to be in a hospital. And unfortunately we've been kind of conditioned in our culture over the years, just as birth is like people felt they needed to go into the hospital and that same thing happened at the end stages. Um, so I'm very inspired to keep people home and tend to them sacredly because dying is unique and it's personal and it's sacred and it's spiritual. All those pieces are in there. And it's such a, a, a teaching to sit inside someone's home and to hold that big care circle 
and to be with the one who's dying? And how do we tend to them after they've left this body, right? How are we tending to this sacred body? Those are such important pieces, just as we bathe the baby, we must bathe that body, anoint that body, wrap that body in love, and send that, all those last acts of compassion, you know, tending to this body so sacredly as it sends off, whether it's burial, cremation, or now there's a world of possibilities we can do to, um, to the physical body to end. So, you know, it's such an honor you know, to be here and to be inspired by each of you as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I could say so much about this experience and, and the joy, but the joy really comes from sitting and learning each and every day and being fully, fully in that consciousness and remind, remembering that, you know, we were, we came from love, we're here to love, and we die with love and everybody deserves that. You know, it takes a, a village to raise children and it takes a village to escort somebody out of this body. So thank you so much for this space, this council, this community and this wisdom. And I am going to pass the talking stick on to Jen. Thank you. It is a blessing and an honor to be here and to be able to speak about different aspects of birth. I'm hearing and resonating um, with different words and stories, and I have a few seeds from uh, the perspective of a birth professional as a doula and a childbirth educator and running a birth center, and then also as a mother in my own birth perspective. And then as a sprite of spirit of earth. Um, birth is a beginning. So we talk about preconception. That's a beginning. The conception itself, that's another layer of beginning. The gestation, the birth, the re reception of how the baby is received. Like these are all beginnings. And this is what we build on. So that's one seed I want to contribute is just consciousness around how are we beginning and holding that as the foundation we are going to build on. So that's the imprint at each stage. And then, you know, it doesn't stop at that moment. It doesn't stop at preconception. It, it doesn't stop when those two people meet and come together. It doesn't stop when the baby is born and received. So at any moment, we not only can begin, we can also begin again. So when there is, I, I love that we're having this conversation because it's, I want to say it's almost inevitable that there'll be bumps along the way and, and even trauma, and then to bring consciousness and layers of support around whatever those waves are in our life, we can begin again and have consciousness to say, whatever happened in, in the pregnancy time, and I'll weave in, I have, I've had two babies both born at home, and one of them I had, um, I, I was a birth worker and I had, um, pre, I, I had preterm labor at 19 weeks and I didn't know, I didn't know what was happening. I was this birth professional and I ended up on bed rest with my firstborn and a very traumatic birth, which I was able to have at home, but it wasn't what was planned. And then in my second birth, I, I had a lot of healing and I was able to begin again. And my second birth was, was um, a, a different kind of journey. And I was able to begin again and heal not only the trauma of my birth, um, but also ripples going back from my own origin story. And um, it was such a sweet and tender moment. I just wanna share a seed from that birth because um, I, I want women to know it's possible to create and recreate what you want. And after my first birth, I shared uh, with my midwife and my partner and my friends, like, I just, I just want to be able to hear myself. 
I want to be able to feel my child. And I want to really be able to pay attention to what's happening in the process. And I hired a midwife. I had a doula. I had my partner was there. And I was in the shower in the birth process. And I told my partner, the baby's coming. And he left. And it was this moment of like, you know, birth has birth is full of uncertainty all along the way. And um, I closed the shower door, I was in the water, and everything went silent. And it was me and spirit, and I really felt the whole channel open. And, you know, I, I love to return to that moment. And I think mothers go back to that moment of birth again and again and again. And the more we can create opening and layers of support for her to create an opening where the baby can move through her, mother is, let's see, I, I wrote these words, mother is continuity. Like we hold, if we as a community, as a family, as a partner, and then the ripples of community can hold mother as continuity. That creates space for the baby to come in as pure essence as possible, and then to be received and build on that. As a birth professional, I, another seed I wanted to throw in the conversation is birth as a business. And as a doula, that was something that impacted me very much, wanting to hold women in their intentional journeys. And then they, you know, birthing women and birthing families come up against the birthing business inside of hospitals, inside of protocols, inside of financial structures. And that, that word to me breaks down as busyness, birth as busyness. And so what we can create in these layers of support to help birth be as conscious as possible is to slow down and create space holding as beingness, not doing, so that we can allow transformation of that mother, transformation of that baby into an incarnate being in our, in our arms. So those are some of my pearls and I, um, I wrote some words I wanted to share as a prayer. And this is mother as continuity. May our babies be held in healthy waters within mother's sacred womb. May our mothers be held in loving layers of family with space and support to grow and change. May our families be connected in vital circles of shared experience and support. May our communities thrive on land that is vital and growing, pulsing with life from the ethers to the core. And may all of these layers of support and connection harmonize to cultivate healing and vitality for all the ages and all the stages and all the babies to come. Aho. And with that, I pass the talking stick to Layla and Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, so much. Although I really love to share about my birth stories, I think that when I reflect on the most potent piece of all of them, throughout each of the three birds that we've had, it comes down to the complete destruction of identity and the storylessness that pervades at all stages of our life if we put down everything that's in the way of, of that void. A lot of people see the process of conception, preconception, conception, pregnancy, birthing, 
postpartum as a beginning and I've always seen it as a death with every single one. It's, it's been more and more destructive than I ever thought it would be to every concept and idea that I've had about who I am and what life is and what life can be and what family is and what relationships are and where the strength is coming from and what the creator is. And I really believe that it's in letting that destruction happen that has enabled our family to have some of the most magical and ecstatic birds that I ever could have imagined. And so I think that if there's anything that I could offer that it, it would be my story because that's what I've lived. But my story has just been entirely about questioning every story that I carry along with me, every belief, every idea, and everything that I think is real. And so my prayer for this field, for the continuation of humanity really, um, is that we become more comfortable in being storyless and that we can see each other as equals within this, as one within this, and that we can feel at home and safe in the unknown of that void. And therefore allow our children to fill the space and to lead the way and to guide everything, our thinking, our truths, our new ways of being in the world in a way that most serves the future generations of this planet. And I'll pass it on to my beloved now. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks. And I also want to just say a quick thank you to Jen too for that blessing. It just felt so moving. And just connecting with all of you and hearing your your offerings and your visions for for what this life can really be and what birthing can be and and what all all parts of it can be. And and I think I feel most inspired right now just to just to invite everybody to to sort of pull within and, and really just totally reimagine everything that we ever thought about birthing and say, okay, we're here to to participate in this new world that we all speak about or hear people talking about and saying, okay, what really is that new world going to be like? And what is it going to be like to be a child coming into that new world? Like throw out all the rules and say, what's this idyllic possibility that it could be? Like, would there, you know, and, I, and not with any disrespect to any field or any, anyone's experiences, because I totally trust the, the complexity of all of it. And I know there is deep, deep trauma in the story and the experiences of so many people that have gone through the birthing experience and we've to some degree felt you know really how deep that is imbued in the culture of birthing and so I guess I'm saying also too just as a snippet if it can be an inspiration to anybody that hears this that, that there can be another way and that trauma and those things you know whatever their wisdom is and in, in whoever's life, I trust that and we all trust that. And at the same time to really leave space for that, that vast canvas that can say, what can birthing be like? Can a child 
literally come into this world free of all pain and all trauma? Can the birthing experience even shed all of its layers, all the built up calluses of tension and, and constriction? Can a birth just like they, like all these we're here and all these whales have come to give birth this time of year or wherever you are, all the, the animals there are giving birth all the time. And it, it seems to be a pretty, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's so much life in that event. And just to witness it happening in nature billions of times every second around us saying, okay, how are these beings doing that? And how do they do that ecstatically? And to really bring that into the human field too and say, okay, can a human being just come into the, the, the physical realm here still in, in the, the waters, still in the waters of the womb until their first breath? Can it be a totally ecstatic experience for the woman? And how can a woman feel so at home in their environment where the birthing party can be a party rather than sort of a, a toil or just transcendent battle, um, so to speak. And so again, thank you to everybody for, for being here and offering so much wisdom around this, this quest to, to really be on this planet in a loving, compassionate way and a supportive way for all for all of our our beloveds here and um just really holding space for for a new kind of birthing to be possible for all beings who who want that and um so many thanks to everybody here for all that you do So we'd love to pass the sacred peace on to our beloved Catherine and Natasha. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you for, for modeling that new form of birth <clears throat> of what's possible. You've done it so exquisitely and continually, devotedly, magically, <laughs> courageously. Yeah. Wow, it's so beautiful. I I really am humbled by the what what I'm seeing because I don't see it too much other than you know uh, fe feeling it and living it. You know, first time I had a, uh, a conscious birth was after I already had uh, three children, and I was brought up where you don't go to go to the you know it was set up and dis dismantling or with uh, masculine energy that's so wounded in relationship to what we feel in the you know in our creative process and dance with life and and i was in that mindset where i never got to go into the birth or birth or see the baby after it was taken away and and i didn't know any better you know i was just a horny guy <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I had a mystical experience back in the uh, late 60s. And uh, it showed me, you know, I was told, take my children out of school. They're shame institutions and turn off the television. They enculturate your children. But I had to let go of everything, that lifestyle and everything, and take this on. And that was what brought me to my, my honey here. And... Uh, We've been working together for 50 years and trying to bring a new pattern of, of birthing, a new pattern, a way of being where the male also, you know, when I touch the, my daughter's, uh, you know, or my kids coming out through the canal and what happens in that moment with the male is connected to it because their males aren't generally you know, brought into, uh, you know, into the birthing cycle. I mean, the one that we advocate. And I'm not going to say much more, but uh, I just honor, you know, our whole work here at Hummingbird and our work for the last 45 years of being together uh, is all about these, as I said earlier, the sun-eyed children of the marvelous dawn. And it's about birthing, but it's also... It's about how do we really 
stabilize a field that allows for that kind of consciousness to continue to emerge in the world. And I was sitting there the other day looking uh, out at my children and I realized I was the elder. I'm, I'm now looking at talking to the do death doulas. I'm, I'm, I'm going out and <laughs> my youngest uh, Kiara is coming in. So it's like this, wow, what an image. You know, to be able to feel as, as a man, the seed that's planted when it comes into the hands. Mm. I mean, it was like, I, I was pregnant too. I never felt pregnant before mm. in, the, in the process. And when we came together, it was just like I was going, wow, this, this is the emergence, you know, and we, part of our work is education and, and uh, uh, you know, to, to live it, to walk these values, because I know that we, we are, we're moving into a place to where we have to trust what's emergent and how do we read the field that is coherent enough to bring souls in and through and then steward onward to release, you know, the seed to the future generations. Mm -hmm. And as I rest in that awareness, I hum humbles me because it's so precious mm -hmm. is I just can't stop crying. I'm going to be dying and I'm crying, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because of the preciousness of, of love that I live in with my family and the kids and grandkids and I'm the papa, you know, and I'm going out at that level of my, my transition pre preparing and, uh, and, and doing as conscious as I can to make, meet death at that level where it's my birth, you know, so I, I really mm -hmm. cherish this and uh, time together and all the work you all are doing is so so uh, helpful and it, it it will help us you know takes across the bridge you know into a new humanity the devotion is there I feel the energy of the collective soul and uh, and how I witness my kids they're all my teachers I used to be their teacher now they're my teacher so uh, I've got a great level of help <laughs> so that's about all i want to say but thank you all for your pioneering uh, visions and how you're carrying it out and sarah for inviting us in this and jan and shelley and all the all that will go out because it's a resonant field of love and compassion all those qualities we would want a new society to emerge in with kindness and and a balanced yin yang, I would say, or balanced feminine ma masculine. But the trauma of, of the male's trauma is pretty strong. I'm trying to address that, you know, with, with what happens because we're so left out and so brought into a culture that doesn't support love. Mm. So that's me, and I'm, I'm, uh, let's all come home together. Mm. <laughs> but take your time. Mm. Mm. I'm I'm reminded of the image when our youngest son Noah was born in the water <clears throat> in Molokai and Makasha and I in the tub together and his receiving Noah into his hands and his uh, has expressed a feeling of of how it was such a um a limnescape of energy of of feeling so much a part of of the birth and the energy especially being in the water. Mm. Yeah, so important that the men are, are right there, which has been true. I know of Patrick and Jeremy and many of our partners. So, um, wow, there's so much that's been addressed as we, you know, wrap up our time together. I just um, want to acknowledge that in these amazing transformational times in which we live, that we're being called to both hospice, that which is dying in our culture, that which is unraveling and ready to be transformed as we simultaneously are, are midwives for all the new that wants to be birthed and the qualities that everyone has spoken to that are present both for a, a actual transition of birth and of, of dying um, are so present in our cultural transformation you know the need to to slow down and deeply listen and pay attention and be caring and kind and 
and, and embrace one another in love and uh, to, to show up in ways that we can really steward and be co-creators of the new earth, the new era that is emergent and bring our love to it that's so um, critical in these times. And there's a quote by a woman, Valerie Carr, who really touched me a number of years ago. She said, perhaps we're not in the darkness of the tomb, but rather we're in the darkness of the womb. And we've used the analogy of, of birthing a new world for, gosh, we first spoke of it 40 years ago, <laughs> um, that we are the midwives of this coming era. And we're in the mystery, we're in the complete unknowing, and we live in the realm, as Sarah spoke to, of all possibilities. And we also um, that need to be uh, accepting of whatever arises because we don't know the birth. The births can be as completely different as we ever anticipated. And we have really no idea what we're moving into here as we all are, are birthed into a new reality. So I have a, um, a short quote I'd like to read. Makash has been uh, referencing uh, the Sun-Eyed Children. It's part of the epic poem of Savitri by Sri Aurobindo that has guided us for the last 45 years. I just want to... Um, close my part with this in the imagining of the souls that are coming in as well as ourselves as the Sunai children. I saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge, which turns toward life, come crowding, crowding, come crowding down the amber stairs of birth, forerunners of a divine multitude. Out of the paths of the morning star they come into the little room of mortal life. I saw them cross the twilight of an age, the sun-eyed children of a marvelous dawn, the great creators with wide brows of calm, the massive barrier breakers of the world, and wrestlers with destiny in her lists of will, the laborers in the quarries of the gods, the messengers of the incommunicable, the architects of immortality. Into the fallen human sphere they came, faces that wore the immortal's glory still, voices that communed still with the thoughts of God, bodies made beautiful by the spirit's light, carrying the magic word, the mystic fire, carrying the Dionysian cup of joy, approaching eyes of a diviner man, lips chanting, chanting an unknown anthem of the soul, feet echoing in the corridors of time, high priests and priestesses of sweetness, might, and bliss, discoverers of beauty's sunlit ways and swimmers of love's laughing fiery floods and dancers within rapture's golden doors. Their tread one day shall change the suffering earth and justify the light on nature's face. And with that, I pass the talking piece to Sarah if she has closing words before Judith does a, a closing prayer for us. Mm -hmm. Mm, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your presence in this beautiful council. Just wanna just complete by bringing in that word celebration. Just to say thank you for celebrating the first day of 2022. We really call this the white lion number. Jan, myself, and Shelley's connections are with the white lions and Linda Tucker and Timbavati, South Africa. And we just trust that this 2022 is filled with the sun-eyed children that we see in Leila and Patrick Square and Kiara, the ones that are yet to come, the ones that are witnessing us preparing for their field and the souls that are departing in this time. We, we deeply honor 
our ancestors with so much love, so much prayer, so much gratitude. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to just add one piece that our websites are listed. Those of you who feel called to reach out, I'm also going to add Ray Castellino's website. The list of all of his practitioners are there so that you know that this field is here to be and supportive of you as well. So I thank you, I bless you, and I call in our beloved Judith one more time to close us out with a closing prayer. Aloha, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. About two weeks ago, right around solstice, I an email came into my inbox and it was probably one of those mass ones. I have no idea who it came from, but it was entitled Lakota Prayer. And I would like to share it with you. It's, um, it moved me a lot. And I'd like to pass it on to you. Great mystery, teach me how to trust my heart, my mind, my intuition, my inner knowing, the senses of my body, the blessings of my spirit. Teach me to trust these things so that I may enter my sacred space and love beyond my fear and thus walk in balance with the passing of each glorious sun. And at the bottom it said, according to certain traditions, the sacred space is the space between exhalation and inhalation. To walk in balance is to have heaven, spirituality, and earth, physicality, in harmony. Thank you very much for letting me share this with you. Now, I think I pass it back to Makasha. Do you have the last word? Well, I would just like to say to just take a moment and close our eyes and just, uh, you know, allow this moment to be held in the sacred womb mm -hmm. of our coming together and the seed that uh, allows us to be able to come together at this time and join each other and uh, you know, sharing our wisdom and support for those that are really needing it to, to emerge this new sun-eyed children of the marvelous dawn and, and do it in the wisdom that the elder would give the, uh, the prayer to you, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, just not much to say, but just deep gratitude and thanksgiving as I, you know, am birthing myself. <laughs> out and still birthing our children so it's it's such a honor to be here amongst the the elders that you are and the gifts that you give and you know and come on out to hummingbird and we'll all hang out here together and just bird children <laughs> thank you mm. blessings and gratitude to everyone Blessings, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Beautiful gathering. Mm -hmm.